Well, everybody, welcome back uh, after lunch. Um, this will not be a session of another hour talking uh, because then everybody will be asleep uh, in five minutes. So this will be a working session. So you have to work and then I can sleep. <laughs> that's, that's much better. Um, okay, uh, in the title of this talk on the program was mentioned uh, the EU project Watch Me that I'm involved in. Uh, I took the liberty to spread some flyers of the project, but my this session will not be in fact on the project, although it will be related in this. Uh, I will have a talk on the project in the CAA conference, but unfortunately that's more or less at the same time as this session, so it's a little bit complicated from an organizational point of view. What I want to do today, uh, who of you were, were in the LASI last year? Oh, uh, okay, not too many. Great, great. I'm not going to do the same thing as last year, but something similar. I want you to think about how to use learning analytics in instructional design. <coughs> so how to use it from a pedagogical point of view. <coughs> and I want to say that all technical issues and all privacy issues, of course they are important as you have seen from the talk by, by Hendrik, uh, but in this talk we can neglect them mostly. So I want you to dream, I want you to think what do I need as an educationalist to, to shape my education. Um, but before that, well it, it will be it will be creative, as I said. Uh, I think two cycles are important in learning analytics and instructional design. The first, the first one I borrow from literature is the learning analytics cycle. So what is learning analytics about? Learning analytics about learners that do all kinds of activity, uh, performances, producing data. Data that can produce all kinds of metrics and can be analyzed in all kinds of ways. These anal analysis and metrics can lead to interventions, interventions in the shape of a dashboard or an educational activity, and that influences the learners. This will show different behavior, producing new data, and this, day, this cycle is continuously running. That's a very important cycle, we have to keep that in mind when we design learning analytics. But there's another cycle that is between instructional design and learning analytics. Uh, they, they are not, they're not separated, they influence each other. So, in your instructional design, you can think about, okay, how can I use learning analytics to, per, to achieve what I want in my education. For instance, I'm aiming for personalized education. I think that's very important. So I want to be able to design a course that is personalized. Okay, well I can think about learning analytics as a tool to make educational personalized. Or I can think, I, I, I think it's very important to allow groups to work together, but they are not sitting in the same room. How can I take control of those groups? Okay, well, Learning analytics might be a way to achieve that. So, learning, so your, your, cho your choice for learning analytics can be given in by the design and the goals that you have. On the other way, learning analytics gives you information on how your instructional design is performing. For instance, okay, well, I thought that my groups were working very good, and, but I see some unexpected results. What's happening? Okay, learning analytics can give me detailed information on what's happening, so I can adjust my instructional design based on that. So that's the cycle I try to, th to work on here. Uh, this is also the cycle that we are going to use today. Okay, just uh, a very brief uh, introduction to in instructional design. I think. Uh, for you, some of you, this is a very old-fashioned and old picture, but it illustrates some of the steps. So, instructional design is really about designing education. 
by setting up, okay, what do you want to achieve? How do you want to achieve? How do you want to measure what has been achieved? And how do you want to fit that uh, together? And there are many different ways in which to methodologies to do instructional design and this is one methodology by Dick and Kerry uh, and they start with in the, in the identifying uh, instructional goals uh, well develop you write your performance objectives develop your reference tests etc so they have the individual steps that you have to go through uh, to come to your goal and of course there are some feedback loops that help you to improve your goal. Okay, um, if you put learning analytics to this model, it appears that there are many steps in which you say, okay, at this step, well, okay, I could think about learning analytics in this step, or I could think on learning analytics in this step, for instance, in, in, in summative evaluation. Okay, that, that's, I think this part that's what we're doing in, in Wouchcode at the moment. We're combining digital assessment and learning analytics. Uh, and this is exactly the spot in which that would fit. Okay, uh, after this very, very, very brief introduction, I want you to introdu introduce a case. And this is the case that we are going to work on. Well, imagine you are organizing a MOOC on the subject of educational management. And you're doing that already for the second year. Who, you, uh, who does not know what a MOOC is? Okay, no problem, I explain. A MOOC, the, the, the word stands for Massive Open Online Course. Uh, massive, it means that it typically attracts a lot of students because it's open, it's free. So there are MOOCs with tens of thousands of students introduced. It. It's online, so you do it on the computer. Um, uh, that's that basically, basically what a an, an MOOC is, an open course online, but typically many students are following it. Uh, there are, well, I think the MOOC has been invented 2012, 2011, more or less. The first MOOCs were really very successful. Uh, and now you see hundreds of MOOCs appearing all over the world. There are places where you can go and find uh, any MOOC on any subject, mostly on mathematics or on car building or on terrorism, uh, whatever. So you can go to a MOOC, follow the course. A MOOC typically takes four to six weeks to follow. It takes you a few hours per week to do that. It's totally free. In some cases you can go to the MOOC uh, after the MOOC, do a test and get a certificate. And those certificates especially by the, by the high quality MOOCs, are going to be uh, of some value because there are now schools that accept your certificate as a real uh, performance. And there are companies that say if you have enough of these MOOC certificates you can come and work with us. So they are really getting some, some value. Uh, and now you see that a lot of universities are investing in, okay, we also want to develop MOOCs. Um, but as education ideas about education change per school, per teacher, there are also very different types of MOOCs. Some MOOCs you follow just uh, a few lectures online, do a little quiz and then go to the next lecture. Other MOOCs you have to work together and you have to produce something and you have to check other, other people's work. So there are lots of differences in the activities you have to do in a MOOC. Well, in this case we have a MOOC on educational management and there's a lot of uh, uh, need for that because, well, the management of schools is not always that good, so we need to improve that. Um, well, in this MOOC, we ask participants to work together in small groups because that's our philosophy, and they have to discuss in small groups, like groups of seven to eight people, online, because it's an online course, they have to discuss online, and they have to do some assignments together. For instance, they get a problem in their school and they have to find a solution together how to solve the problem. For, for instance, your budget is cut half, so how do you deal with that? How many teachers are you going to fire or are you going to close down some of the schools? Okay, so that's the type of task we ask the students to do. 
Uh, well, these participants, these are not students. These are people from all kinds of different backgrounds. Professionals, maybe students, maybe somebody, somebody that already has been retired but is very interested in the subject. So very different types of people. Maybe politici politicians, uh, and they have all kinds of knowledge levels. Okay, well, there is a problem to MOOC, otherwise it wouldn't be here. The problem is that too many people drop out. So we have, I have to say, this is not a real MOOC, this is all made up. But let's imagine we have about 9,000 people subscribing, but only 500 really finish the MOOC to the end. So a lot of them skip after two weeks and say, okay, I like the first lecture, but I don't have time. I have something different to do. Okay. Uh, well, the group discussions is one of the points that you already noticed that they are not going so well. So some of the groups they discuss very well, but a lot of groups they don't discuss at all. And you get some complaints of people, yeah, this is very theoretic, it doesn't connect to my situation at all. I want to have something more personal. Okay, this is your starting point. Well, how could we apply learning analytics to improve this MOOC? So what could we do? How could we do use techniques from learning analytics to really help this MOOC and to make it a more successful one? This is our task for this afternoon. Uh, how are we going to do that? Well, we are first going to form some groups. And to do that, I want multidisciplinary groups. So I'm going to ask your background. So who of you uh, regard themselves as educational data miners? <laughs> Only one? One or two? Okay. People that really are number crunch crunchers. No? Okay. Okay, you two have to sit not in the same group, so you have to <laughs> split up. <laughs> yeah. uh, who are programmers or ICT people? Okay, more of that. So look at each other, don't sit in the same group. <laughs> uh, who are uh, educational people? Educationalists or educational researchers? Okay, uh, you're already very nicely spread over the room. Who are management people? Who decide about money? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. Great. Okay. Uh, who didn't I mention? Okay. Your background. Uh, hybrid. Um, both data as as is. Okay. Great. Great. Okay. So if you could not sit in the same room as uh, uh, as the real data crunchers, then that's a fine. Okay. Uh, I think we can do with six groups, I think. Six groups of four or five people. One, two, three, four. Yeah. Uh, and I want to ask you to, yourself to organize yourself around the tables, but please do not move the tables because there are, uh, how do you call it, slings moving cables, uh, wires on the floor, taped to the floor, and we don't want to destroy things. So if you please could organize yourself in, 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 in small groups. Four, four to five people. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and then I explain the next. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you have to pre make a brief presentation on your solution. So take some time for that. I think we have 15 minutes for that. Now we're going to present each of the solutions to the group. And afterwards you can vote on which of the solutions you think is the best one for this. So we make a little bit of competition. I don't have a prize for the winners. So when you say things, <laughs> think also about technology, privacy, security, etc. How do you combine it with your initial you comment that we shouldn't really think about well, privacy issues? Well, okay. You, uh, yeah, yeah. 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 We, yeah. we, we, we want to win, of course, so we want to make sure that the rules Okay, are so first is 
think everything is possible, and then make some remarks, okay, but this could be an issue of concern. Yeah. But I think the best one is for us not to let you down, well, that what will be possible. Well, we try it, and then... Yeah, you're right. In, uh, I'm an old one, so I'm Okay, I have some papers uh, here prepared. So you can use this to, to work out your design. Yeah, I have to use big letters now. Well, maybe not too much. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Same background. Yeah. Go a step further. Apart from just thinking whether something might go right or wrong, I try to deduce what type of people appear to be good matches and what type of people would do. As far as and, yeah, yeah, and as far as you have that information available, we'll come to later. And it's interesting to to see which people actually finish the course because there's a, a lot of people who dropped out. Yeah. Um, uh, so yeah, if, if we can make a, an analysis of people who are actually finishing it, we could maybe yeah take some uh, some points out of that. Yeah, the background exactly. Maybe uh, you know do, do maybe there is a reason behind that. Maybe there's a reason behind. Maybe it's it's more applicable to build their field. I don't know whether the technical can be good. What kind of data do we have? In your field. So provide the answer. There are so many courses uh, organized at the same time, and uh, sometimes I want to three courses. I agree. I too fast. I mean, would it be something that I then can see uh, other people that, that uh, also think it's going too fast? So I have a sort of better. Uh, saying it's going too fast or something? No, you can stop uh, selection. You have to yeah, download the other. Yeah, but no, normally you can download the selection from yeah, but it, to your computer. Yeah, okay, yeah, I understand. Perhaps better group or, or, um, or label sort of different types of behavior. Or collaborative uh, uh, feedback that we don't have. Yeah, you can also put that whole thing. But yeah, and then. De ene werken beter dan de ander. Ik denk dat die dropout rates ook heel erg verschillen van. Ik ben wel meer chaotisch en zo. Ja, waar je zegt dat je dat komt te horen nog meer. Voor dit soort dat kan. Ja, ik denk dat daar veel goed is. Er werken students die ook altijd willen doen veel te veel. Je moet heel snel doen. 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 Ik heb een idee dat het altijd een schedule content is. Ik denk dat het 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 een schedule how could we get more commitment? Did this help? Yeah, okay. I think this is the third step. And they're brought together again. Yeah. And then those two merge, let's say. Yeah. Yes. And that doesn't matter. And that goes through. And that goes there. Or one of them could also be connected to those again. We can maybe yeah. map them here, yes. Yeah. Here we can see the Yeah. Well, you, everybody's almost finished. One group has to put a little bit more words on their design, but okay, they can explain. Uh, unfortunately, I have to go to another session to get the presentation. Uh, but uh, Hendrik and Alan will. Did uh, presentation. I'm a little bit unfortunate. I would 
really like your presentations, but I will see them on, on moving later on. So, um, um, well, I think uh, we'll have about five minutes presentation for each group and then more discussion afterwards. I think uh, what I saw from the solutions, everybody is working in totally different directions. And that's, of course, very nice to see that if you have a, a vaguely defined task, you get very different solutions. That's okay. I think everybody worked on the idea that you need to, to set some goals first, because the goals are clear enough, so you have to do that, as with any, any instructional design. I think some groups are more on a little bit on the technical side, and the other group a little bit more on the economical side, uh, how to keep as much people inside. Uh, but that's, that's, I think, it's fine. Uh, so I have already had to peek at that group, so I know that it's quite exciting what, what you did. Um, well, I hope to hear a little bit more in the break uh, later on. So see you later on. Well, Henrik, Henrik thank you for the opportunity. Uh, okay, so I think the plan is this, that I will keep track of time, and if anyone goes over five minutes, then they will be brutally murdered. So, so uh, but only softly. Yeah. So he checks us for five minutes and kill us off exactly five minutes. And so maybe you can Oh dear. Totally readable. So Gabor's going to tell you everything, <laughs> starting now. Everything I remember. So, um, so the, the main goal of this exercise was to, to find out how to uh, lower drop-up rates from uh, MOOCs. So the way we were thinking of, uh, about this problem was that, OK, first of all, we were thinking about what are the goals of uh, a MOOC from a MOOC owner uh, perspective. So we, we wrote here things like, uh, and now this is your part because this is your handwriting. <laughs> so we, we were uh, mentioning maximize on uh, revenue, which is not, um, uh, 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 doesn't have to be financial, but also reputation, uh, 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 redirection to other MOOCs or to other uh, courses offered by the same organization, um, uh, uh, certification, um, uh, providing employment if uh, possible, clicks that I don't remember. Head clicks. Head clicks. Um, also, very important uh, criteria goal is quality, so the, the quality of the MOOC itself. And the third one is. Oh yeah, uh, maximize the number of certificates uh, 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 this MOOC owner uh, uh, can provide. Then we were thinking about uh, barriers. So what are the barriers? What might be the main reasons uh, of, of uh, dropouts happening? And there was a time barrier. There was a um, content barrier. Uh, content is not suitable. Content is uh, not understandable, um, so on and so forth. Um, what's this? Okay, so what do you mind from? Okay, no, I can read the words, I just uh, don't understand context anymore. So, choice is an option. So, if you have uh, many, many uh, options um, uh, of courses, you don't really know what is really for you. Uh, a language might be an option, the velocity of learning. Uh, uh, Socialization. Some people feel isolated during uh, uh, studying in the MOOC. Some people uh, they really uh, express uh, their words um, uh, more efficiently and much uh, uh, for a much wider uh, uh, community within um, a special MOOC. Um, context of learning, individual context, uh, uh, is also an issue which may. Uh, um, result in uh, dropping out. Complexity, uh, uh, we thought, was um, also one of the barriers. 
So what we what we suggested at the end is uh, basically a three-step process where analytics uh, can um, uh, add value, and the first one is sort of pre-screening of uh, applicants. So um, when an applicant uh, uh, applies for a course or applies for a MOOC, we are asking uh, uh, for data about prior learning, uh, prior behaviors in learning environments, uh, uh, individual profiles, uh, what have you not. And based on, uh, on this pre-screening, we try to uh, basically redirect uh, the, the applicants to other MOOCs if possible. So see if uh, the MOOC what uh, this person selected really fits to, uh, to that person. Then once the MOOC started, we uh, start monitoring the, uh, the process and we are thinking about uh, redesigning the, the MOOC context because right now MOOCs are, as we see, relatively passive, uh, right? Yeah, so poop. they are not MOOC but POOC and what we saw that we can, we can have the content of a MOOC and we try to cut the content into smaller pieces and uh, reshuffle those pieces according to the needs of the learner. So, in st creating some sort of uh, wine, if you know the service, this is very popular now, this is 10 second videos. So, creating um, uh, VMOOCs, uh, wine MOOCs, where uh, the content is sort of short, but very up to the point. So, the users can, uh, or the learners can come and from the given amount of content, they could uh, 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 build up their own uh, curricula. Uh, that's five minutes, isn't it? So, <laughs> on to the next person. Thanks, Ru. Sorry, you want to go? Shall we? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's too late now. That's 30 seconds. So, unlike others, I actually made a presentation. Ooh, that, that uh, takes you five minutes to find a laptop. Exactly, and a beamer. Where is it? Where, 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 there's the beamer. You can have my laptop. <laughs> Will we will present our stuff in the meantime. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too professional for this role. Of course, there, okay, but I can only use my laptop. You've got four minutes. Please <laughs> <laughs> give me some time to read this eh, because it was really difficult. To yeah, yeah, it's terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Is there a group that has something on paper? <laughs> Your group? Or is there a group that has a PowerPoint and wants to present it? <laughs> they should come here. <laughs> I'll, uh, uh, I'll go first if you want. Yeah, okay. Just read it out loud from the. Um... Um, well. <laughs> um, the uh, problem we had with the uh, discussion was that we were still stuck in the discussion and weren't really able to formulate a very concrete uh, set of, uh, well, the entire scheme of uh, how things should work. Um, the, the common line, the red line through the whole thing is that you have to um, gather your information at, at several levels, at the level of the individual, at the level of the group, and at the level of the uh, MOOC itself uh, and how these uh, three levels interact with each other. Um, if you look at the individual level, you have to, uh, as the, uh, the previous uh, presentation also indicated, um, you'll have to gather personal information, personal data like culture, professional background, social media activity, whatever you want to gather and like to combine into just think we're uh, sort of... 
this is not my presentation. Um, Stand um, back. On the other back. hand, you've got the personal data that you can use to improve your uh, MOOC and to, um, to, to um, how do you call it, um, to set up your groups, to form your groups. Um, you could also use uh, personal preferences, the individual preferences that you can have people indicate uh, beforehand, but also that you can gather during the course itself or during the setup of the course, and that you can use to either reshuffle groups or um, make uh, the, the composition of the groups in such a way, in such a way that they uh, are able to finish throughout the course and end uh, in a successful manner and giving you a uh, more successful dropout uh, or less dropout. Um, what we also found was that the uh, what a very important factor could be, and which you um, and an aspect that you could gather during the course is the role that people play in the group. So, if you've got a chairman-like person or a, a contributor or whatever, that you can use that to uh, assemble your groups and make sure that, uh, on the basis of that profile, that you can increase your success rate. Um, one minute left, sorry. One minute left, that is no problem, I'll just skip that. Um, we had uh, three stages. Uh, the pre-stage, in which you can gather information, the stage during the MOOC, at which you can also gather information, of course, but, and also adapt the, 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 the participation of the people, of the individuals in their groups during the MOOC. Um, and our final stage, or the, the, the post stage, which you use to uh, gather the information during the course and uh, that you can use to improve next year's uh, uh, MOOC. Okay. And, uh, that was more or less what we came, uh, came up with uh, during this uh, three quarters of an hour. <laughs> Two minutes. Okay, <laughs> so I thought this was going to be practical, but apparently it is, but we'll go move fast. So we're the quarterbacks, um, and uh, one of the uh, intuitions that we have is then in order to make it more applicable, perhaps more concrete for people, for a lot of them, a constructivistic approach to a MOOC might be more appropriate. But then the uh, 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 awareness came that perhaps for, for another subset it might not be. So we propose a HMOOC, a hybrid between uh, uh, constructivistic approaches and, and a more traditional approach, and then students can choose, but as well as the learning analytics uh, could, could analyze whether somebody is uh, going well at this unstructured approach and connecting to people, or whether they would much, much more prefer to get their uh, learning resources handed to them. So that's one setup. And uh, another uh, uh, conclusion that we made is that if you really want to be this sort of uh, uh, applicable course, it should fit within the daily life of these participants really, really well. One obvious thing is that it should be mobile, but you could really extend this to perhaps some, some, some interesting proportions where you would analyze their schedule and their agenda, see that they have a particular meeting on a particular topic, and then uh, 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 see that there's a particular uh, resource or discussion from peers that connects to that, making it extremely relevant, perhaps scary, but at least extremely relevant uh, for, for uh, as a learning experience. Um, so we, we had some, uh, some concrete ideas for what learners could do, both for learners and instructors, for, first for learners. So one of the things is that, uh, uh, um, I think I skipped one, no, okay, oh, there you go, good. So one of the things is that uh, uh, often in research on MOOCs it's apparent that participants have different goals, it's not everybody's intention to, to, to pass the course, so if you would just ask that at the beginning, you can uh, uh, take that into account when comparing them to students from, from the, 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 the year before. Um, but also take it into account when you uh, 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 connect that back to an instructor saying, okay, these people dropped out, but they never intended to stay anywhere. Um, another observation is that MOOC populations are diverse, and this diversity might, apart from being a richness, might also be sort of a problem for really converging to con concrete examples that are relevant for everybody. So you might want to have sort of subgroups at times where there is slightly more of a, a, a commonality between those groups, <coughs> or between the participants of that group. And learning analytics could help with that by analyzing the discourse that people uh, contribute on fora and, and the type of interactions that they have, and thereby sort of characterizing their domain or their subdomain 
uh, and at least offering the students a choice whether they want to be in more uh, groups of more similar students as them or, or really dissimilar and, and perhaps connect with, with years before to see whether that was a, would, would be an interesting or, or, or a, uh, a, a successful choice or not. And uh, 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 for instructors, uh, um, given that the instructor typically has an intended audience, a particular set of people with, with a particular domain that he or she feels that the course is beneficial to, if you would have this characterization, if you would know that the goal of those people is to pass this course, then you can see whether there's a match or not. And it might be that the people who he thought was supported are, are really uh, bailing out or are, are missing connections. And it might be sort of a different group that, that really feel uh, 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 that they can learn a lot or that they are learning a lot from this course which the instruction have thought about and then perhaps can add new resources. Um, and very simple but very useful is to also just ask very explicit feedback when people can say this is not clear or this is too vague or I would like to apply this. Can you give a more concrete example? And that's it. Okay. Okay. I like it. by learning analytics in order to, to get a successful MOOC with less dropouts. What do we have? We want to get dropouts back and we want also to have more context-related uh, assignments which will uh, move motivation up, which will mean that we will get uh, less dropout. So we have a kind of a balance which uh, we have to, to um, influence. So, uh, to know more about motivation, we have to know more about the people. So here, learning analytics can help us in order to, to get uh, enough information about the people and, and keep the information known. So we have to have the profiles of the people and we have to know what people are doing and having their agenda through the whole course. So that we know uh, when they have time and when they can communicate and work together with other, peoples, with other people with the same interest. We've also seen that people in the group are uh, very different, so we have to put together people with the same interest to get this high, and uh, then this will mean that uh, we have to know uh, where people are and they have to, they, we can uh, put learning analytics there to do this work for us. Um, well, and for that, we have, um, we're going to take the data from uh, three places. So first of all, the profiles, also the previous years, because uh, by looking at the previous years, we can see uh, which students were actually successful, which can help us to easily uh, find out which student might be likely to drop out in this year. Uh, furthermore, we can uh, review our material to make uh, the material better and therefore um, bring up motivation. And we're going to look at the, uh, at the course data, as well at the data of the young going course at, at the moment it's going on. Um, the main goal for doing that is um, because we want to uh, emphasis for a big part on the planning of the course. We think that would be the best way to help students that normally drop out. Um, we, um, we think that there's a big group of students that actually uh, comes in a MOOC not with the goal of actually finishing the MOOC, but just to experience uh, it for the first time. And we think we cannot really benefit um, in that area, in the sense that those are not the students to focus on, but more the students, which, um, um, which is a smaller group, but the students that start and don't finish, probably because they're too busy or it takes too much time. So what we want to do is use um, the course planning and give um, users the ability to change their planning, to um, see the planning for the course, see the deadlines, and make those deadlines earlier if that fits the schedule better. Um, and maybe ask a user if he's okay with sharing his agenda. Maybe we can actually fill in parts of the agenda of a user to let them know, okay, we, we noticed that you have some hours here. You could fill that time and you could do your, your MOOC homework. If you're not going to do it right now, we'll notice and then we'll fill it in at a later time. 
um, furthermore, based on the personalized planning, so the fact that people can change their own planning and change their deadlines, we could give better reminders um, so people get more motivated and do not drop out. On the other side, uh, on the other side for the motivation, we focus on uh, context, like Natasha just told, because that was apparently something that was really important for users in the, in the previous course. So what we want to do is make that like the main focus of the course by making assignments related to the kind of situations that people apparently want to study. So at the start of the course, we could ask people uh, if they can state the, their goal for the course, what it is they want to get out of the course. And based on that, we should make assignments on which people can work together based on the situations that they were interested in. So for the grouping part, we also want people to be able to pick their situations and then work together with people on those. And on the other side, we want to group people that can work at the same time maybe or um, have um, similar, similar interests in, in a different way than the situational one. Um, but in that way, we want to recommend and not so much um, influence from, from above. So we make like recommend recommendations to people for whom they could work with. And based on those recommend the recommendations, we want the grouping part to be completely dynamic. So it would be possible to, um, to find a group of people, come into that group and work together. And then based on the peer review, you would be graded for the amount of effort that you showed in that area. So by making the course um, more, more flexible in like different ways, making it more flexible in the sense of planning and making it more flexible in the sense of working together and focusing the content more on the situational approach, we hope to basically reduce dropout and increase motivation. So there are several places where you put learning analytics here Actually, everywhere. Here for the analyzing, <laughs> here for grouping. You need a stift. Yeah. So I think we had the final group then here in the front and although Jeroen said we had so many different approaches I have to say there's so, so much common we all identified the issues with the MOOCs and know how to solve it and we all go to the same direction with the recommendation having no profile information and so on so we also had that here with analyzing the dropout when it takes place or uh, putting that on a timeline correlations between profile and drop out to see who drops out and how to get there motivation to get over the drop out and well we, we came up with one clear um, message <laughs> instructional design really sucks <laughs> and actually it's not working so when we talk about learning analytics it should be more like a decision tree yeah? so you have the learning analytics interventions in your instructional design and then you have to follow different decisions and therefore you have the analytics on different places so and then we played with that idea of a decision tree a bit and, and work with that and then this figure comes out where we have the instructional design in the middle very linear actually following the course um, with 10,000 students that start and 500 that do really the assignment at the end and then we were thinking about okay when we start now with our decision tree instructional design then we have something like maybe uh, again profile information in the beginning motivation and other things clustering these people and then they have a first split based on their interest to put people together that are interested in the same topics so we have kind of personalized analytics in the beginning kind of cold start and then uh, in a second analytics that's more group based where you take then the interaction and the data that's collected over the working together to make further analytics and let them merge what actually what we do here is kind of, uh, yeah, it's not a MOOC anymore. It's, we're going to personalized learning, basically, we all. Huh? So we, we solve the MOOC problems with personalized uh, learning at the end. So I'm quite surprised that we all kind of come up with the same solution. Do we agree with that? Or? Yeah. yeah. Okay. 
Well, that's a great session, I would say. Huh? So we all start with one class. We also we are all consultants for all these MOOC providers, Coursera, and so on. So we do. If there are no more questions, we can go to the coffee break. And after the coffee break, that is half past three, we are in the big room with the CEA people and then look for papers that are between computer-assisted assessment and learning analytics and have then the panel discussion there as well. Mm -hmm.